Yo, you know what time it is. It's your boy Trevor David Jones back up at it. And this is this is the heart and soul of the channel. We're back in the move, we're back in the mix. The the Imagine is culture reviews. This is what it was all built on, okay? We're back at it. And this show, this time we've got the newest show from Marvel. Much um anticipated, a lot of people have been waiting on this. Secret Invasion, okay, starring Nick Fury. All right, he's back. You know, he's got the scrolls. And it what Let's not, without further ado, let's cut the nonsense. Let's jump right into the positives. Okay, so the opening scene. The opening scene really did the job and it did it well of setting the tone for the entire show. It really did. You had Nick Fury, or excuse me, you had Agent Ross, fresh, fresh off of um, Black Panther 2, you know, going to find some info with my man with the pins on the board, conspiracy theory style, you know, putting together the events around the globe. So it becomes rather clear just within these first few minutes that this is going to be a scroll centric show, i.e. you don't really know what's going on, okay? And you literally don't know who is who. I mean, it when you when you introduce an element like that into a show, it's like you just have to watch till the end because at any point, I mean, anyone can be anyone. So kind of throw your guesses out the window. You can have some light guesses as far as, you know, maybe what you think might happen or you know who is who, but Anyone can be anyone, so you just gotta keep watching. But yeah, the first scene with Ross and Homeboy was intense, man. I was watching on my computer, you know, solo, getting kinda like choked, like it was intense. So the man gets shot, and I'm just like, yo, this show is already getting things off to a pretty, uh, a pretty high mark. So uh, Ross splits out of there, or yeah, it was Ross. Sam already like, who was who? It was the scrolls? So Ross gets out of there, and they're running, and if you if you notice. The scene is bathed in like purple light, okay? And as I mentioned in one of my previous reviews, purple is the color of enlightenment. So that means that someone's about to learn the truth. I really like that they threw that in there. So as they're running, um, as we know, that man Ross falls to the ground, Spider-Man 1, Tobey Maguire style, and like, <laughs> and what was an unintentionally funny moment of the show, he kind of gets back up, and I'm like, yo, he should be dead. Like, did y'all see that fall? But he kind of starts moving. And I was like, okay, you know, it's, it's a comic book show. I'll go with it. So, but then he gets shot. So I'm like, okay, y'all know I can only take so much. I can only take so much. Just in that moment, I was like, okay, this show is about to be a lot. Like this, this is like in the first four minutes of the show. So I'm like, okay, okay. They're taking it to that level. Um, yeah. So I feel just that opening opening scene set the tone for the entire show like I feel like they kind of they put it all in there the emotion the scroll elements it uh it got everything off really to a great start okay so now we're gonna move on to the intro the intro heard around the world that AI intro um I saw some some complaints some people were like oh they're taking jobs I'm gonna just say this off off the bat that intro was tight I liked it I really did it had that weird AI look to it you know it was kind of like fluid and it literally, I would almost say it was necessary. It perfectly fit the, um, the tone, the emotion of the show. It did, just in that moment. I liked it. And that's beside the point that I also uh, read that actual animators, you know, put together the actual scene work for the intro, then they ran it through an AI, which makes sense to me. I mean, what what commands would you type into an AI in order to get that intro? Let me know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was obvious that someone actually storyboarded that. So yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Um, I liked it. And if you watched in certain elements uh, in the in the uh, in the intro, they had the alien cloud over the White House. Watch that. Pay attention to that. Okay, they're trying to tell you something. And shout out Samuel L. Jackson. They showed that he's an executive producer on the show. I really like that. Um, yeah, everyone's getting, they're getting to the bag, man. <laughs> they're figuring out the game. So it's good to see that Samuel himself is actually a, a part of the creation of the show. I really like that. Okay, so now we get into the show proper. Things begin. So Samuel Jackson steps off of what I can only presume is a spaceship, an alien spaceship. And he has his collar popped, if you pay attention, the exact same way as Agent Ross did in the beginning of the episode. It was like in the same angled up, angled up position. Y'all like, oh, what does that mean? Nah, you gotta pay attention to stuff like that, okay? They put that in there for a reason. So, M Ross, I believe, yeah, he was a scroll when they shot him. Fury might be a scroll, you know what I'm saying? The Fury that actually came off the ship. 
I mean, he's been with the scrolls for what, 30 years at this point? Maybe he is a scroll. And I'm saying this on wax right now, on wax. I genuinely, genuinely will not be surprised if Fury as we know him is just a scroll. I'm serious, like, first of all, why not? But second of all, they gave you the little color pop uh, cue. It's easily possible. So, you know, as we know from Captain Marvel, the OG movie, he, uh, he apparently went to live off planet with the scrolls like right after those events. And that was like, what, 1991? Come on, man. This Fury might, is, might literally be a scroll. And if he is, I just, I'm, I'm not gonna be surprised. Okay, so they go for it a little moment and they start putting together the team. Cause now they've got the plot of the show. They gotta stop these bombs, you know, they gotta stop it. And they got the guy on the locator screen and Fury goes, and I don't even cuss, I don't cuss what I'm saying. He goes, where is his ass? I said, okay, this is gonna be a good show. It is because they're letting Samuel do his thing. They've got all this like high spy action. You know, they're out here with all these people and he throws in these like very, you know, like soulful, I eat black basically comments. And I was like, man, this is what's up. Like, this is why he's been around so long. This is why he's Nick Fury. I really like that line. And they kept, when they were breaking down the whole situation, they said very casually, uh, scrolls are immune to radioactivity. Could, could they have done like a, a further deep dive? They're just immune to radioactivity. Come on, man. That's a, that's a superpower in and of itself. Because if you look at characters and they start going into like, if you look at, let's say Wikipedia, character powers, they'll say unaided travel in space. For, that's, a, that's a power. Um, one of the main things, not to get this too far off topic, that is holding like humans back from going into space, really into space, is that there's a lot of radiation out there, like a whole lot. So long story short, being just immune to radioactivity in a general sense, I was like, can we get a breakdown on that? How are they doing that? So yeah, um, very interesting just for them to just throw that in there. So they're breaking on the situation and they're like, yeah, if he fires off the bombs, it'll be the end of humanity. And Fury just like stands up, another moment, go back and watch that. I just busted out laughing like, that's it. You never want to see things, things got to be serious, but you can't get too serious. And one thing that Marvel does great is levity. So this show has its levity and I'm just like, man, it, they've got the, the serious who's what's going on tones with, with the jokes. I'm really, I'm really excited to see that. So we cut to the White House. Now they find out that Fury's back on Earth. They're like, oh, stuff's popping off. And they show Rhodey, you know what I'm saying? Don Cheadle, that made me very happy. I like Rhodey, you know, did I like Iron Man more? Like most people? Yeah, it's Iron Man, we all love Iron Man. But a little Rhodey action? I mean, hey, these are, these are callbacks to the movies that we've been seeing and loving for all these years. So I, just to see Rhodey in there with the suit on, yeah, that was cool, man, that was cool. So again, they're going with the jokes. So they cut to Russia and um, Fury's walking around at night alone in Russia, which he shouldn't be doing, which was kind of a funny moment because it's like a spy show. So he knows, he knows what's up um, and he gets caught. We found out he, he wanted to get caught on purpose, but you know, that, that added some credence to why he was doing that. But when they're unmasking him, the lady was like, oh, I got word that there was a large, a large black man walking around Moscow. <laughs> Oh, I'm laughing just talking about it. She's like, it could have either been like you or Paul Robeson, who's like an OG, like multi-talented um, um, uh, American figure. Look him up, very impressive. So yeah, man, another actual laugh out loud moment. They're bringing the jokes. I'm super excited and super satisfied with that. Very good. So they're talking, they're doing their whole little spy interchange thing, blah, blah, blah. And uh, when Fury put the eye, like the camera eye on the owl, it was at that moment that I understood what type of show this was. It was in literally that moment. I thought I knew when the scrolls were getting shot. Nah, when he put that eye on the owl, I was like, oh, this is some spy games type stuff. Like you, you just have to watch till the end. There's no point while it's going on that you're going to understand exactly, you know, every element that that's at play. You literally got to watch till the end and don't make any assumptions. When he put that eye on that owl, I understood. So I'm along for the ride, man. It's good. It's good. So they do their little chop up. She kind of like goes on about how <laughs> Fury's not the same as he used to be, which was a theme in this whole episode. Everybody's kind of like talking down on Fury, but we'll see. Fury's still got the gas. Come on, give me a break. So they cut forward to, to new Skrullos, okay? So not only are the Skrulls planning the secret invasion, they actually have like a little, actually not that little, they got a secret base, okay? 
um, a, a several hundred kilometers outside of Moscow, all right, with like 500 scrolls and they're just like living life, chilling, all right? Bro, they had some kids, some kids running around like playing basketball. I was like, yo, okay. See, now it's about to pop off. It's actually about to pop off. And the whole presentation of New Scrollos, while I was looking at it, I was like, man, I can see what the plot of this show really is because they knew that was wrong. The scrolls in that moment, they knew that they were wrong. Like they had a whole, they have a whole base, a base, a base like of scrolls on planet Earth. And they're like, yo, this is, we about to take over. This is our planet now. You're cruising for a war. Like the second someone decided to do that, I was like, okay, the war is on. And it was, it's really funny because the scrolls have direct knowledge of the Avengers, all right? And in some ways kind of helped create him because Talos was there back in the day with Captain Marvel. He was down for the whole, for the whole inception. So he knows what's up. And it's just like, and when, when they showed that, I was like, well, I get, they better have something. Like they must have some sort of way for this to actually succeed. They, they've got something down in there. And when the lady, they're like, we're gonna take you to the back room. They're like, what's back here? And she's like, victory. I was like, good. Like, what do y'all have? <laughs> because they answered the question that was on my mind. So they go back there and um, they've got some, some humans like yoked up in these machines and scrolls can just come in there and obviously steal their, um, their vices, their face and also their mind, which is like high key evil. Like scrolls are more powerful than I thought they were, bro. Like, you, you're here still in appearance and just still someone's mind like the home man yeah they're actually pretty powerful that's not like a whack power um and it also reminds me y'all may have uh seen or read the books back in the day animorphs animorphs classic book series that had the yurts those things that would go in they were the whole enemies of the show super creepy it reminded me of that but even after showing that i was like well okay y'all can steal people's appearances and blah 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 um i don't think that's gonna be enough I was expecting them to show the super scroll. Some well, they had some dude up there, extra shady, and like a little jacket behind the glass. So who knows what that's about? But I was expecting them to actually show something because there has to be a way that they're going to win this confrontation. Um, we'll see. Right now, even with five hundred scrolls, some little bombs, and their plot to take over the Earth, they know about the Avengers. Like they know. So I'm just I need to see, and they'll probably show it. What is their plan for victory? Because now they're just cruising for a bruising, like big time. Okay. So they wrapped up new Skrullos, so we know the Skrulls have an actual presence on Earth. A pretty sizable one, and a plan to try and take over the Earth. We'll see how they do that. Um, we skip to the a person who was introduced earlier in the episode, the homegirl. She's Talos' daughter, all right? And Talos and his secret agent, you know, missteps, but they turned out to be the, the pro steps. He, he gets her to give up the location of the bombs. It, originally, he just wanted the bombs himself, but he gets her to give up the location, which is good, which is, you know, that'll work. So we learn that they're gonna intercept the plot. We learn that Fury might potentially have like PTSD. So that's kind of interesting um, from, the, from the blip, from, from Thanos' snap, because everyone keeps saying, oh, you've never been the same since Thanos, you've never been the same since Thanos. So that's just interesting to see that they've introduced that element into the show. You know, some, some like mental health and care and stuff. So yeah, they threw that in there, very cool. So we go forward pretty much to the end of the episode, the final confrontation of this episode. And the main enemy they were talking about, this dude named Gravik, um, has been following Fury around for the whole episode. He's just been like following him. He was different people. The girl who was like kissing on the bench, um, the one chick holding the rainbow ball, the guy in the bar. I mean, if you know anything about cinema, about, about uh, media elements, you knew that all these characters were, were symbolizing or were something because they were like staring at him out of nowhere. The camera's focusing on them. You know something is going on. But we find out that they were all graphic and they were following him. I mean, if you follow the trail back since he got to Earth, since he got to Moscow. So they've got the trail on him, man. That was, that was pretty crazy. So graphic seems to have some sort, of, um, some sort of ability. We'll see what he's really about. So they get to the end and they more or less like intercept the plot. They kind of do it, but the bombs do go off. They go off. And during the course of all this, sadly, my girl Robin, okay, Robin Sparkles, Colby Smolders gets shot, okay, dead in the chest. Maybe it was the stomach. Regardless, she, unless she, she ain't coming back, you know? Um, I don't think they have any back to tanks in, in the MCU, so 
Colby Smulders is down for the count, which is kind of sad because Maria Hills is like the co-director of S.H.I.E.L.D. In the comics, she was the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a while. Like, this is Maria Hill. She's made, she's not quite Nick Fury, but she, I mean, she's legit. You know what I mean? But they, she got toasted in the first episode. But it gave credence to what she said. It, it gave credence to what she said. When they were playing chess, it was her and Fury. You know, when he was like coming back, she was like, Fury, you need to... You know, everyone's been saying how he's, he's missing a step, how he's not the same. He's like, y'all need to chill on the same. But she was like, you know, all that to the side, you need to commit. Like, you need to really commit to this mission because if you're not fully in, someone's going to get hurt. She looked him dead in the face and said that. And the thing is, she had a point. That was one of the smarter things anyone said in that episode. If you don't fully jump into this, yo, we're not worried about if you're the same. We're, let's focus on the present. Someone's going to get hurt. And she prophesized that moment, uh, maybe unintentionally or who knows. But yeah, she got hurt uh, permanently. And But in the show, who knows? That's what I said in the opening to this video. We don't really know what's going on with the show. Like, there's we, we got to wait and see. But as of this moment, Kobe Smolders is gone. And yeah, I mean, this is obviously going to serve as a wake-up call for Fury. Um, I felt he was doing pretty good, but he's probably going to dig deep and find another level because... Um, moving just a bit too slow or not being on top of the ball three steps ahead as they say as he always was ended up getting someone seriously hurt so this will probably be a wake-up call for fury and that pretty much brought the episode to a close that was it so we know the major elements of the show the scrolls are here they've actually been on earth for a while well yeah they've been on earth since captain marvel at least they have new scrollos this legitimate compound fury fury we'll see is back on earth maria hill is down for the count Gravic, we know the basic elements of what's going on. And it's good, and it is good. And I wanna give a, a shout out right here as the last positive for this episode to the cinematography. It deserves a shout out. Some of those shots were so good, man. That's the thing. You can never, the thing you can never sleep on Marvel about is the quality. They're gonna bring the actual quality. I was watching this like, man, this is legit. Just the positioning of the shots, like how, you know the film quality itself um the fidelity you know of the pictures it was yeah i just had to give a special shout out to the cinematography because it was actually that good i have to make a point of it in this review so uh good job on that all right room for improvements Whew. nothing really nothing really and you know if something needs to be talked about i'm gonna talk about it go watch my ant-man i'm gonna let you know if there's some room for improvements and not particularly in the whole episode, which is crazy because this episode was an hour long and there was nothing in particular I can point out that needs to be worked up on. The one thing I will say, and this is um, maybe more personal, is that it could be a, this, I want to see some more superhero action, okay? My favorite Marvel show to this moment is WandaVision, um, but really more for the psychic elements, not even for the quote unquote superhero action. But that's what we want to see is some superheroes like getting down, you know what I mean? Some heavy hitting, some laser beams. And this is more grounded, which is fine. That's what the show is about. But like I said, if I have to point out one thing that, you know, I would like to see this different, that would probably be it. And uh, since this is going to be the whole show, I'm, I'm not going to bring it up again. Okay, which leads us to the rating. A five out of five. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I mean, there's nothing you can really take away from it. It was all there. You had the acting, Samuel L. Jackson. I, I, all, all the acting was good. This is Marvel. That's what they do. The acting is going to be there. Samuel L. Jackson, Colby Smulders. Everyone brought their acting, my man Ross. It was all there, so we can never take away from that. They had the levity with the comedy. That was partially, that was what made the episode really as enjoyable as it was, was the jokes that they put in there. They never made it too serious. Where, where is his ass? The stand-up, large black man? Yeah, yeah, man. It was, um, it was Samuel L. doing his thing, and um, you know, Talos had his jokes in there. It was good. The cinematography, a special shout-out. It was so good. The pacing. Um, another thing. The CGI on the scroll human transformations was really good. It wasn't like whack at all. It was uh, strong, it was very convincing. Look good. Um, yes, yeah, so it definitely gets, it gets a five out of five. There's nothing I can take away from it. It's a good start to it. A very mysterious, like I said, we don't really know what's going on. And because of the nature of it, you, you, you're gonna have to watch it till the end to really know what's happening. But um, including all that, it was just a great episode and it, it it set the stage for the show. It gets a solid and well-deserved five out of five. And that's it. That's it. Yo, we back at it. Your boy Trevor David Jones is back about it. Like I said, we got some changes going on, but I'm never off the YouTube game. We holding it down. We out here. You know, got to get, um, get the game up. Got to get it going. 
Check out my last video, it was a reaction on Death Battle. I love Death Battle, we all love Death Battle. It was uh, Killua versus Misaka. I don't watch a certain magical index where uh, Misaka's from, but it was great. So check out that video. It uh, was a lot of fun to make, they're all fun to make. Go look at that. I've also been doing my Tears of the Kingdom, my Zelda Diary, where I just show daily what I'm doing in the game. It's a great, it, I mean, it's an all time game. It might be my favorite Zelda, which is crazy to say. I mean, Ocarina of Time is my favorite Zelda for, for a long time, but this game is just so good, it's so complete. Check out my diary uh, where I show just, you know what I'm doing in the game on a daily basis. Chidi J recommendations, as always, Google Fi. You can't, you can never sleep on Google Fi. It's true international. I can say this from true experience. You've got the true unlimited. The cost is right in there. This is not sponsored. It's just me like, if you need a cell phone service, I'm gonna tell y'all, get on Google Fi, it really is that good. And that's all I got for you. We out here. As I always say, cause I genuinely mean it, stay up, up. Never wanna be this way in life, all right? Always this way, always going this way. And until I see y'all again, cause we in the game, you know, I got the um, next week's secret invasion. I got all sorts of stuff coming up. We ain't never slowing down. I'm gonna see y'all again very soon. Peace.